Hi, you both want to do it with one more beautiful time. We are in another session. This particular video is made on a special request, which is now appearing in front of you in the screen. And that particular person had asked me to do a special chapter. So that's what we are going to do now. Great 10 general sciences in front of you as per the Sri Lankan government school syllabus this is going to be chapter number 15th video number one we will talk about hydrostatic pressure and its applications in this beautiful chapter now the hydrostatic pressure and its applications is a very tricky subject therefore we are requesting you to give a very special concentration on this as the equations are coming then and there to solve the problems, you have to be very highly prepared to answer the questions with high level of understanding. So I hope you can understand this chapter very clearly after explanations. So let's do that one. Okay, let's get into the subject now. Pressure. Let's understand the pressure first. What exactly is a pressure? Okay. Now, there is a surface. When you are keeping something on the surface, the force is applied perpendicular. Am I right? Think there is, you are going to keep a box on top of that surface to that exact location. And that is the region that is marking that you are going to keep the box. Now that area is known as A. So the equation generally says that the pressure is equals to perpendicular force. It has a measurement divided by the area. Always when there is an equation comes like that, there is a measurement, the method to express it. Now we're going to understand that. The unit of pressure is Newton's per square meter. That's what they are talking. Now, what does that exactly means is this. The perpendicular force is expressed in Newton and the area is expressed in meter or squared meter. When we are solving it, this N remains as it is and this squared meter will come up that is coming as m minus 2. In your previous classes also you know how you're getting this equation. So this particular equation is no more a new equation to you. So the unit of pressure is Newton's per square meter. What is that? Per square meter. Now that is expressed as 1 per 1 Newton's per square meter. Now there is a, an interesting way to express that in a very good way. As a tribute to the French scientist Blaise Pascal, he is the gentleman who is given a priority in this particular pressure unit things. As a tribute to the French scientist Blaise Pascal, this unit has been named as the Pascal. You see this one? Now, this one Newton's per square meter is getting a name called one pascal so you have to always think about one pascal when we are talking about pressure so the pressure is expressed as one pascal but remember the squared meter and this newton is the concern to get this one pascal now let's get into the subject and dig it a little deeply you already know that scalar quantity and vector quantity. This is definitely an extra information. Scalar quantity has only magnitude, but vector quantity has magnitude and direction. Look at this. Length has a magnitude. It doesn't got a direction. Therefore, length is a scalar. Area is a scalar. Volume is scalar. Speed is scalar. Mass is scalar. Density is scalar. So the one what we are learning, pressure is also a scalar quantity. But we already learned that displacement has a magnitude and the direction. Therefore, the, it is known as vector quantity. Didn't we learn it in earliest 
videos so it says that since pressure has a only magnitude it is a scalar now this can be an mcq question for you all isn't it so they can ask an mcq question on to you which one is a scalar quantity or which one out of this four is not a scalar quantity and they can give pressure and if it is given pressure you should know that pressure is a scalar not vector so you can put a small note somewhere let's do some math okay a cubic shaped box is placed on a table mm -hmm. if the weight of the box is 400 newton they are giving this and the area of the bottom of the box is 0.2 square meter find the pressure exerted on the surface of the table and the box so you have to find out the pascal and you have to always remember the newton yes they have given 400 newton and then after that the area always has to be in meters all right meter squared now that is a, an interesting one isn't it that is an interesting one let me take my different color one 400 newton divided by 0 0.2 squared meter once you are solving this equation once you are solving this equation as 0 0.2 is below there you can put another extra zero here and make it as two right okay now we can solve this one very easily this is two and zero 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 so the answer for this question is two thousand n m minus two so when you're expressing that one in pascal the answer for that question is two thousand p a you understand i hope 2000 pascal is the answer for that question and i explained it to you in a very good way now let's put another question in front of you that is the pressure exerted by a pile of soil distributed over an area of eight square meter of the ground is 150 pascal so they are giving the pressure and the area and they are asking you to what is the force exerted on the ground due to the pile of soil they are asking you what is the force now let's solve this issue also 150 pascal is the one that we are getting perpendicular force should be this in newton definitely and the area they are giving is eight meters squared now to find out the newton right this 150 mile should be multiplied by eight the answer you are getting very easily let's solve this equation and find out what exactly the answer is right 150 multiplied by 8 will become 1200 i'm 100% sure about it yes right and this is going to be newton so the force that we want to understand the perpendicular force f is 1200 that's the answer for this question do we have any other question let's understand that also mm -hmm. we have to understand now hydrostatic pressure what exactly is a hydrostatic pressure now so we know about the normal pressure now we are going to understand the hydrostatic pressure so okay pressure is exerted not only by solids liquids also exert pressure mm -hmm. now if you're talking about this particular surface getting a perpendicular force on that particular region you know what happens and one direction is the only direction that the pressure is applied now let's talk about some liquid liquid when you are pouring into a tub or a basket like that you can see the pressure is in everywhere the pressure is also getting to the walls bottoms and everywhere now very simply when we are telling the vertical walls of the vessel will also experience the pressure 
Apart from this, there are many more characteristics of pressure due to liquids. So these are called hydrostatic pressure. You can see exactly here also the pressure is applied, here also the pressure is applied, the downward also the pressure is applied not like the solid pressure. Now when we are taking a bag full of water like that, if you make some holes in the polythene bag, the water is comes out when you're putting holes on those places. From everywhere the water will come out. The water will flow like this when you're putting hole. Water exits through every hole because water pressure exists at the position of every hole. You understand it very clearly. From this experiment you will observe that the water pressure acts in every direction. Water pressure acts in every direction. Lovely. Now you're taking a, a little height of a bottle and putting a hole like this. You see in the same height the hole is put. Now when we are taking the measurement of the water that is getting thrown from the holes as it is in the same height, this all arrows which here marked over will be the same distance. So you will notice that the horizontal distance traveled by the water coming out of every hole is the same. Why? That's because the pressure at the same level of a liquid is the same. So in this particular region where you are putting holes, the pressure is same. The pressure is same. Unlike that, we are going to check this one now. We're putting a hole in this position and see the water where it is getting thrown. We're going a little above and putting one hole. The distance is different. Let's go and find out another one. The distance is different here. And there the distance is different. From that experiment, you will observe that the speed of the stream of water coming from lower hall is greater than the speed of water coming from upper halls. Now when we measure this direction, this distance, it will be different. And this distance is different. You see this one? So distance is getting lesser when you are moving above, when you are moving the above upwards. That means the pressure in this direction, in this position, pressure in this position, pressure in this position and in this position has a little difference, isn't it? The pressure is more when you're going down. So therefore, it can be concluded that the pressure in a liquid increases with the depth of the liquid. Therefore, it can be concluded that the pressure in a liquid increases with the depth of the liquid. Now think this is a swimming pool or a well. When you're jumping inside, you can feel the pressure, more pressure when you are going down. That is very, very evident in your daily life also. There is an example coming to you at a certain location. The depth of a certain point in a lake is 1.5 meter. Good. Find the pressure exerted by the water at the bottom of the lake at this location. Now pull your chair and concentrate very clearly. Now this is going to be another equation. Here the pressure is equals to in this liquid solution and liquid kind of a question. We were talking about the force that is for the solid. Now here they are talking about water. At a certain location the depth of the certain point in a lake is 1.5 meter. They are talking about the depth that is h. Find the pressure exerted by the water at the bottom of the lake at this location. Always the g they will give that is also given and the density of the water is in the in this particular is given as 1000 kilograms per cubic meter. Now we are going to apply that. We're going to find out the pressure. So let's put the equation as it is 1.5 meter. It should be always meter. Remember that if it is in centimeter you have to find out in meter. And then after that 1000. Yes. And then you are applying 10 over here. You have to solve this issue 1.5 into 10,000. 
I'm solving one by one for you all to understand very easily. Sorry, 15,000 pressure is always expressed in Pascal. I'm just writing once again to remind you PA is the unit that you're expressing Pascal or the pressure. So in this question, at the point where the lake is 1.5 meter, the pressure exerted by the water at the bottom of the lake at this location, the density always, they will give the water's density is always 1000 kilograms per cubic meter and the, the G that they'll give every time, that is gravity, yes definitely, 10 meters per square okay you got the answer right over there now the depth of a certain region of the sea is 10 meter here they are giving 10 meter find the pressure acted exerted at this region by the seawater take your pencil out and do yourself also this one while i'm doing p the height is given in meter you have to always remember meter 10 meter i'm just writing as it is multiplied by 1050 yes 1050 kg per cubic meter multiplied by 10 meters per squared lovely now we'll solve this issue 10 yes and uh, it's very simple okay now as earlier i'm solving the issue one zero five zero and zero and here one zero five zero 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 pascal once again i'm reminding you the pressure is expressed in pascal so it's very clear and how to do these kinds of equations solutions and uh, there is another question you can do it yourself very quickly. The depth of the reservoir is once again 1.2 meter. Yes. And they are giving the density of the water as 1000 here. I'm not, I'm not even reading this particular question. You see this one. Calculate the pressure of the bottom of the pond. There's a pond with a clear water. And then uh, there is 10 as the gravity. So I'm solving the problem. 1.2 multiplied by 10,000 and the question's answer will be 12,000 Pascal. Voila! How simple and easy these questions answer, isn't it? Okay, now we came to know what is that pressure in hydrostatic pressure also. We'll further learn the subject in a different angle with a, and a different uh, title from now onwards and I hope you understood the hydrostatic pressure and how to solve the problems that is pertaining to the hydrostatic pressure in a simple way and I'm going to meet you in another beautiful session till then bye bye take care of yourself